Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to P2P Relates, where we talk about all things relationships. I'm Pat Renfro, and today we're going to talk about the potential danger of expectation. I tell you, we have lots of expectations. We think things are going to go a certain kind of way. We expect that when we attempt certain things or when we've trained for certain things or when we planned for certain things, that things will go smoothly. And when they don't, it really can catch you off guard. Today, I sat down and I just assumed I would knock out this recording and it would be about 30 minutes and then I would spend the remainder of my time doing the editing and we'd move on. But instead, oh my goodness, so many things occurred that interrupted my flow that prevented me from having the smooth uh, progression of success that I thought I would have to do this recording. Psychology Today says that unrealistic expectations comes from premeditated resentments. Now, isn't that something? I honestly have never thought about that or heard that quote. That quote came from the 12-step process. And I guess I could agree with it in that you know how a wife or a spouse or a partner will say, well, I shouldn't have to say it. You should know me. That's expectation through and through. So let me not get ahead of myself. We're going to talk about good versus bad expectations. An example of good expectation is I am going to graduate. I'm in school could be at any level. And I've decided that no matter what it takes, I am going to graduate. That's a good expectation. It hurts no one. It puts no pressure on anyone else. It's a decision you've made within yourself. Let me give you a bad expectation. You, talking to a spouse, are going to cook. I don't like to cook and you're gonna do all the cooking. I decided when I was young that when I got married or in a partnership, I was not cooking. So if you want me, you're going to have to cook. Who is that infringing on? It's infringing on the other person that you've independently or individually decided was going to do what you wanted them to do. Who does it benefit? You. It doesn't benefit them necessarily unless they just love to cook and you fortunately met up with someone who is the opposite in that area and you all compliment each other. But again, the expectation. So let me define expectation. My definition of expectation is one individual decides that another individual needs to meet his or her needs or wants. The other sub part of that definition is whether it pleases them or not. So you can see from a bad standpoint, expectations can be highly inappropriate because you can decide that someone is going to serve you on a certain level, whether they so much want to do it or not. And in your mind, that resentment might be that you, my daughter, when she was younger, used to just kind of joke with me and she'd say, you're going to do it and you're going to like it. And that's what expectation says. And expectation goes one step further. And it's probably when you're in the resentment mode. And I really don't care if you like it or not. You just need to do it. So when you get in that mindset in a relationship, it could be a friendship between two people. It could be a business relationship or marriage or dating. But when you get in that mode, what you're really saying is I'm not necessarily in a mindset to respect fully the other person's will and preference. Take a husband, for example. The wife might say for my birthday, I expect my husband to buy roses for me. And I've let him know that this is what I expected. If he loves me, he's going to give me my roses. 
But the reality is, unless the marriage is broken and there's other problems that you are actually dealing with, have you given your spouse a chance to express his love for you in his own way, his own abilities, his own personality, or have you mandated what he better do? And what we miss in our expectations is that many times we cause the other person to turn toward resentment because they feel trapped. They don't feel like they have a choice. And yet, if you were to back up and really think about it, you might discover that, wow, they really cared about me in this way. This is how they were trying to show me. But we can get so bent on what we need and what we have to have in order to be happy that someone could come in a different package and we wouldn't even be able to accept the delivery because we've made up our minds it's got to be this particular way. So you've seen already an example of a good expectation. I set a goal. I work hard. I'm going to do it. And a bad expectation. I'm going to mandate that someone else gives me what I want or else. And that's very dangerous in a relationship. It's very dangerous and it's very unhealthy because the reality is we need to give people the right to be who they are. Now we are free moral agents. We were made with a choice. We get a chance to decide that we're going to do a thing or not do a thing. Now, just because we have choice doesn't mean all goals and anything's okay. Boundaries are always necessary in a relationship. Healthy boundaries that say this is okay and that's not okay. But expectation is an animal all by itself. And we have to be healthy. Actually, I learned this from my sister, my baby sister. She used to tell me a lot of times at the beginning of my marriage that expectations can kill a marriage because you're so busy deciding what you better get and what he better do that you're crushing that man or that woman. You're, you're preventing them from having self-expression. And if you think about that in friendships, are you listening? Are you being a friend to them and being available to them? Or are you expecting them to serve you in certain ways? And when they don't, you may not ever say anything, but are you pouting? Are you holding back? Are you resentful? If I do something for you and I'm your friend, do I expect you to do something for me when that similar situation comes up? Easy example. I love birthdays and I love to acknowledge people's birthdays with cards or sometimes gifts depending on what I come up with. Now when my birthday comes, when I look around and no one's given me a birthday gift, I have to check myself and say, okay, hold up, hold up. Did you bless that person with a gift or a card because you loved them and you cared about them and you wanted to let them know they mattered and you were glad they were born into this world? Or was it a tit for tat gift? You, you gave it to them because you expected that when your birthday came, they would do the same. You have to choose to check yourself on a regular basis, especially when it's dealing with expectations. So on the good side, when I told you about self-growth i told you about deciding you're going to get your you're going to graduate that was a on the good side of expectations another good side of expectations is a gracious mindset and what does that mean it means that if people do nice things for me or in my honor i would embrace it enjoy it acknowledge it accept it and in, and and just be there with it but at the same time, if nobody did anything in that particular situation, how do I feel? And do I take that personally? Because if I take it personally, if I'm offended, that means I had an expectation that might have been a bit unrealistic or unfair. But if I'm gracious, then I say, oh my goodness, it was so nice of you to remember me. Thank you so much. 
I appreciate that. When people do comments on my channel after watching a video and they go, oh, you're so pretty, or that was really good, or I really like that, I'm gonna share it with someone. I'm graciously thanking them. But if I had expectations, it might look like all my friends should like me. All my friends should subscribe. And the reality is how dare I? Who am I doing this for? Am I doing it for people to help them with relationships? Or am I doing it for my glory? So I just wanted to close off by saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's been my theme for the month, I guess. That we're, it's really important for us to think about our motivations. Talked about that last week. Why are we doing a thing? Are we doing it for our own gain? Or are we having expectations that will help ourselves as well as others? But again, if I expect a friend, a family member, a coworker to do a thing for me because I've decided they should, I'm way off base and I've got to back up. So I hope this was helpful. Your takeaway is to just ask yourself, how often do I have unhealthy expectations? And what are my expectations? And can I put some in the grid of healthy and good? Or do I have to put some in a bad, unhealthy category? And do a like if this helped you. Do a subscribe and you'll hear my posts. I post every Friday. And uh, tell other people about it. Have a wonderful, wonderful next week. Bye.